In this video, we're going to quickly derive a formula for arc length in parametric form, and then we're going to apply that new formula to get the arc length of this ellipse in the example. So just a quick reminder, if, if, if a curve is given in parametric form, it means that I give you formulas for x as a function of t and y as a function of t, and then as I plug in values of t from some starting point to some finishing point, that traces out the curve by generating ordered pairs. So a parametric curve might look something like that. And how do we get the arc length of such a curve? Well, the trick is just to write down a little infinitesimal length of arc, and we'll call that ds, and then we split it up by using the Pythagorean theorem. So that little ds is going to split up into a horizontal dx and a vertical dy. Using the Pythagorean theorem, I say that ds is the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. Now I just need expressions for dx and dy. Well, since they're both functions of t, I could say that dx is dx dt times dt, or in prime notation, x prime of t dt. We do a similar calculation for dy, plugging this into the formula for ds and then factoring out the dt squared out of the square root, giving me a dt. I arrive at an expression for ds entirely in terms of the variable t, and now I can just sum that up. The total arc is the sum of all the arc length contributions, and there's my formula for the arc length of a parametric curve. Okay, now we're going to apply our new formula to this ellipse. And I wanted to point out real quick, if I look at the equation for x of t, I can tell immediately x has a max value of 3 and a min value of negative 3. y has a max value of 2 and a min value of negative 2. So that's how you sketch these things real quick. And it's simple enough to apply our new formula. I just have to compute x prime of t, which is negative 3 sine t. Compute y prime of t, which is 2 cosine t. Then I plug into my arc length formula, and I'll clean it up a little bit. And as it turns out, there is no analytical solution for this integral. So we're left having to do a numerical approximation, and I'm going to use maxima for that. So here we are in maxima, and I'm just trying to illustrate it first. If I try to use the integrate command, maxima is going to try to find a symbolic antiderivative to this thing and I hit shift enter and it just repeats the same integral to me so that's maxima's way of saying that there is no analytical solution to this integral and that means we have to use a numerical approximation and for that we use the quad qag function and all the syntax is the same for the integral except that we have to specify which algorithm maxima is going to use for the approximation you can choose any number from one to six so i just chose a one and the first number that pops out of this is the approximate value of the integral, so about 15.9. So there's the arc length of our ellipse. If you find the math content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce dozens of new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.